Eddie came because Valerie Bertinelli was his wife at the time, and she was the host. Eddie wasn't scheduled to be on the show. After a time, this was, Eddie was like well into my 10 years somewhere, right in the middle maybe. Um, I was there from 85 to 95. Eddie came with her. Eddie was bored. He's, he's not doing anything, right? He's like, he doesn't want to follow his wife around like a puppy dog. So he finds out about the music office. And he comes over and hangs out, you know, because you can do whatever you want in the music office, you know. We're in there drinking, smoking, whatever. And uh, so hanging out, I had a, a guitar is always in there. So he'd sit, and he'd sit in the couch and play. And he was comfortable there. It was his people, band guys. He got that. It was, he could relax. So at some point, we start talking. Hey, man, I said, why don't you do something with me? Because it had gotten to where we're doing these band shots, and the show had become quite successful by about 88, I'd say. Again, it had been very successful. Yeah, I don't uh, They would allow me to invite anybody I wanted to come sit in with the band. So whenever there was a great guitar player in town, I would invite him to come sit in. And this wasn't in, it used to be TV Guide was this magazine that came out. There was no internet, so you couldn't look it up on the internet. And it didn't say in TV Guide that, that whoever it was was going to be, David Gilmore is going to be playing with the band. No, it didn't say that. The camera would come up for the first band shot, and there's these people, whoever it was. And for the musicians, that was a cool thing. Um, a couple of the guys from Metallica told me that, that there were times when they would like, had come off stage and they would get on the bus and turn on the TV to see who was playing with the, with the band that week, you know. So anyway, Eddie was there with Valerie. And it was just a natural thing. I mean, he's one of the great guitar players, so why am I not going to put him on? Of course I'm going to put him on. Mm -hmm. So we did that. And he had a little lick that he had written. Something like that. Something like that. And we took that, and I'm sure we got with Lenny Pickett on that one. And then we wrote, an, I wrote another section to that song, and Lenny arranged the, the horn parts, and then there we were. And there's dress, and there's air, right? There's two shows Saturday night. So at dress, it was fantastic. It was ridiculous how good it was. Eddie was. He's a master, he really is. At air, it was great. I mean, it was super high quality, but he made a tiny little mistake. He dropped one, he just forgot like exactly where this one very intricate little thing. Nobody would even know about it, you know. Maybe three people in the United States went, oh, where did he make a mistake? Nobody else knew. He was so upset that he had made a mistake in that. But it was great. That was really fun. Eric Clapton, um, by the time Eric was on, I already knew Eric because I had played with Bob Dylan and done some things with Eric. And I might have done a couple other things with Eric. Now, Eric, for a guy like me, for a guitar player, that's kind of intimidating, you know, because he's sort of the one of the ultimate guitar people for my generation, you know. Uh, but he, he was great, and he was on a couple times. And I remember the one time, it was, must have been 92, and he had done this album called From the Cradle. So he'd gone back and done this straight blues. And it was great, really great record. Now Eric was using at that time, I think he still uses a very particular kind of old Fender amp that was made in the late 50s. And I have all those old amps, you know, because I started buying them when they were free. You know, in the 60s, you could buy those for nothing. Now they're thousands and thousands of dollars, but they were 30 bucks back then, you know. Anyway, uh, through channels or whatever, they had sent me the message, hey, do you have one of these amps? Could Eric use it? Sure, no problem. 
So I get the amp up there, and it's a real good one. You know, they're, they're, they sound different. They're all the same looking, but they sound different. Every one sounds different, I guess. Uh, these guitars are all different. You can get 20 of this exact same model from the same month, from the same year, and they're all different. Anyway, so yeah, this is a really good one. So Eric and the band come. They've had customs problems. They've been sitting at the airport for six hours or something. They were up all night. They played the night before in England. You know, it's, it's like... They are fried. They are not happy that they're at Thursday camera blocking at 11 in the morning. <laughs> okay, so they're going to do a Buddy Guy song called Five Long Years. So Eric looks at the end. My amp, it's, it's a really good sound, but it's a little ragged. It's been around. You know, it's pretty beat up. I used it a lot. So he kind of looks at it like, oh, Christ, what's this going to be? You know, and he plugs in. Boom! And he hits the first note, and his whole band just woke up and went, Wow, that's good! What is that? And he goes, Man, that's ringing like a bell. And he turns over, you know. So uh, he was really happy about that. And uh, I don't know, I've, I've gotten to do a, a few, back in those days, I got to do some things with Eric, and, and it was really fun. You know, what an what a honor for me, you know, to get to play with these people, all these people that you mentioned.